rid of, of the old memories. We start new memories. Game day battle where Cleveland Sports News meets biased and outspoken opinion. Full game day crew here tonight. We've been off for a while. And, uh, hey, 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 how you guys do? How's your holiday, everybody? Holiday? Good. 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 Good, good. stuff. Brett, how's your mom? Good. Great. Good. Good. Great. Good. Good. Dale's often concerned about people's mothers. Yeah. Yeah. Lots of love. <laughs> All kinds of love. Um, we had a lot going on during our little hiatus for a while. Of course, we've got the NFL postseason uh, uh, heat, heating up at this point. But we also had a lot of activity coaching-wise. We had the, the possible uh, Chip, uh, Chip Kelly and then, of course, a slew of other names that have been thrown at us. We're going to look at all of that and, of course, uh, ask, ask the big questions. You know, how much does the actual NFL experience matter? And that probably varies a lot from person to person, but there are some good, good cold hard facts that need to be thrown out with, uh, as far as that goes. Also, um, CFL, one of the pr prospects is a CFL coach. Does that make a difference? So Dale's showing, uh, showing his opinion right now, I think. Um, <laughs> so we're gonna also going to look at, uh, at the candidates, and I think we ought to pick a candidate. Did we pick a candidate? Did we yep. pick yep. one? Did we got one? Mm -hmm. Stats? Pick mine. Got everything? Yep. All right. So uh, we're going to have everything. We're going to take I'm prepared. Thank you, Brad, for being prepared. It's a new year. Yep. You're, fu you're fuckest. Sure am fuckest. Yep. <laughs> 2013, watch the fuck out. Um, so we're going to look at the candidates, get to break them down a little bit, and just have some fun with that. Um, we're going to, as I mentioned, the NFL postseason is in full swing. We started our brackets, and to be honest, we all got them right in the first round because we didn't do it until tonight. <laughs> but um, it, we're going to go forward with that, and of course, crown the uh, crown the my, king my of the bracket round, champion. Bracket, bracket champion, yeah. Ramon, the current defending bracket champion, so... Um, okay, well, the, the Brown season's over, obviously, and we can look back, just do a quick little, did we move forward, you know? Did we actually end the year better in some way than we started off with it? And, uh, of course, there's always interesting things to look at as the year goes, uh, went on, at least, uh, looking back at it now. Uh, OSU, it's almost time, it's almost Buckeyes basketball time, and, um, almost they've taken it. It's definitely well, time. It's definitely time. time. It's time, but everybody's focusing on other stuff. It's just too early in that season. Yeah, don't care for me. You, March. Yet. you watch college basketball when there's nothing left to watch. Sorry. Just I didn't. And, I and don't. Because right at that point is when it's really starting to heat up and matter like for, the, the uh, for the tournament. Well, yeah, but you're weird, so. That's because you root for, like, every team. Yeah. No. Duke. Notre Dame. North Carolina. Duke's been, no. Fuck the North. <laughs> really? Yeah. Just stab in your it's eye. Boston. Fuck the Tar Heels. That's, that's yeah. It's Duke. Uh, Man, hey, whoever's yeah. winning, that's who Brett's rooting for. Yeah. Bullshit. <laughs> Game Day Battle is brought to you by Bamboozles Restaurant and Lounge in Parma. They have the best drink specials anywhere. Seriously, buy one, get one free drinks. How often do you hear of it? You don't. They do it twice a week. Billy's mom makes the pasta sauce all the time, and the burgers, you simply won't find a better one. Check them out, bamboozles.com. Again, bamboozles.com. When you go there, tell them GDB sent you. Um, but the biggest question really is, because Chip Kelly was the guy, Right? Everybody w saw that uh, it was in the works, actually. The, the contract was in the works, and something fell apart. He really wasn't that interested. Whatever happened, the Browns walked away. He went back to Oregon. Um, but I heard so much, and there was a, a lot on, on the Facebook forum and, and elsewhere, about getting an experienced NFL coach. This guy isn't an experienced NFL coach. He's been very successful at Oregon. He hasn't been there a long time, but he's done a lot there. So the question really is, how important is it to be an experienced NFL coach, even if you haven't won a Super Bowl? So just simply having experience as an NFL coach for a season or two, but you haven't won at all. So that's, that's the question. And Brett, um, if, if you had to choose between the guys that are out there now, and you got a guy that with proven NFL, um, and I'm sorry, NFL experience, but without the big victory, does it mean anything to you? Uh, yes and no. I mean, there's plenty of coaches out there that have been great, but never held the trophy up before. Uh, I mean, it's really comes down to who your players are, and if you you know have those few ego maniac type players, and they they think that they're they're the shit, and you know, but yet they don't want to play that way. Then it comes down to that too. It comes out to your front office. Uh, I mean, Norv Turner is a great example. I mean, he's had numerous possibilities winning Super Bowl, but he's just got a team that. 
the like quarterback. The, I hate the quarterback, by the way, but uh, the thing he's just the bad ownership. He trades he, away all their players. Yeah. Oh, seriously. So um, I just think it comes down to the front office and the ownership and how that comes down. But there's plenty of coaches out there that has you know great NFL you know season statistics. Statistics. Nice. Today, Junior. But uh, <laughs> good rebound. <laughs> um, but has never been to the big dance. So I mean, NFL experience is a huge, huge part. And going from college to NFL, I mean, there's been plenty of coaches that have done that. Nick Saban, but uh, but he just excels in in the college atmosphere. That's where he's at, you know. And it's just, I just think it's a big transition from college to the NFL. And I think NFL experience is definitely needed for an NFL team. When you say NFL experience, do you mean a guy that pretty much started off at the lower ranks and has, has done the uh, the assistant and the OC or DC and and um, and then moved his way into a head coaching job already? Or are you saying just simply somebody that's been in the NFL in some coaching role for three or four years? You could take that either way. I mean, any, I, I would any like, sort of contact. Take it like how you like it. Yeah. I mean, I honestly, I, I, I would love to have a coach that started off as, as you know, QB, co uh, QB coach and worked his way up there to – get to that head coaching job because he's worked his ass off to get to that spot. We did. Or, we had Mangini. man genie. That didn't work. Oh, I love man genie. Say oh, really? Say it again. Really? He was the ball boy all the way up. Is he on anyone's coaching because list? I, I, would, I would love to give him a call. I would love to give him a call. Hey, genie, hey, let's hey, see. Look what happened when, uh, when Rex Ryan took over the Jets. Yeah. They suck ass. God, I saw a graph for him today on the offensive production of the team, <clears> and it was a fucking... And look what happened to the Browns the year and, after Mangini left. And they kept him. And they kept him. Like, seriously. And they fired the OC. Like, yeah, blame it uh, on him. Yeah. He's a scapegoat. Rex Ryan, you're an awful coach. Back yeah, I, I think I, I like Mangini. I think it, granted, should we have more than two years to try to fix a team? Yes. But if you come out here and you're, what, you only won, what, nine games out of 20-something, then it was bad. It was a bad, obvious, bad time. It's obviously not something that you, you're pretty good at, so... Well, Dale, and you like Mangini. Yeah. Obviously, NFL experience coming here. Um, <laughs> he had uh, New, England, Mangini. New England and Super Bowl experience, yep. and yet came here, and, and it really wasn't a good time. It wasn't a good time at that point. I know you're saying that he did a lot of things that we can see now yeah, we would like to have. Yeah, that. we had discipline, and I but, haven't seen that. It's been a long two years. But it was a big, big mess. With it, He got to pick his, his boss, the general manager, remember Coquinas and... And Coquinas got fired for some sort of drug-related thing, right? And, but then, and then it was just a, it was a, it was a really a big mess. And then Holmgren came in, and he wasn't his coach, and he made him pick Cole McCoy. Mangini didn't want Cole McCoy; that was Holmgren's baby. He thought that he was going to be the savior, so he was basically coaching a player that he didn't believe in. Well, they took him third know? round. Yeah, yeah, but it's whatever. Back to the question that you asked. <laughs> back to the question that you asked it's earlier sixth round, about you know about an NFL coach or a college coach. I hear that argument every year whenever they're talking about bringing a college coach into the NFL. Do they find success? Do they win Super Bowls? Not likely, but look what Pete Carroll's doing. You know, he's doing mm -hmm. great in Seattle. He's got that team winning. Sometimes it takes a younger coach to reach a younger team because that's the kind of style that they're used to. You know what I'm saying? Now, as far as an NFL coach goes, name a coach for me that won a Super Bowl, then went to another team and won another Super Bowl. I bet you can't name one. I don't think it's ever happened in Iowa. Yeah. So, I mean... So, you know, hire, hiring a Super Bowl coach to your team, I mean, it's not the <laughs> answer because you don't have the players that they had, but... You just try to find that next best guy. And I like that they didn't jump on, you know, the, the, the first, the, the sexy pick in Chip Kelly. Because he was the one that ESPN, you know, trying to sell him to Cleveland, man, mm -hmm. big time. And at first a lot of people were like, oh, I don't really know about this guy. But let's be honest. I mean, he's a Pac-10 coach. The Pac-10 is weak, you know. And, and, to, and the, his best season was 11-2. and two. We don't have the players to fit the kind of offense that he runs. So I'm, I'm glad that they didn't just, just take him because he was there. To be honest, I'm, I'm so glad that, I know we want to talk about the season, but I'm just glad that it's over. And now it's, it's a new time. Like the Cleveland Browns that we're used to seeing, we're not going to see that anymore. We've got an ownership that wants to win, and we're, now we can build on something. And they're trying to find that right guy, they didn't, and they didn't just jump at the first guy that looked good. So I like that they're actually sitting back and actually talking to a lot of coaches. Um, I know our top two guys, the guy from Syracuse, what was his name? Uh, Bill Monroe. No, uh, Doug, Doug, Doug um, Martin, no, Moran or Moran. Yeah, somewhere. He, he went to the Bills, so he's not that <laughs> smart. Gonna fill the void. There's a void. I think that, I think that. It uh, needs to be filled. Fill it. 
Do it. Just, fill the void. Just right become right some now. sort fill of an awful porno or something. Nope. Just, just fill it. <laughs> I think that um, I do think that experience matters, and uh, not just like NFL experience, but just coaching experience in general, of course. So I'd like to see a head coach. I'd like to see a head coach come and be head coach here. I don't really want the whole trial run from a, with a guy who's a coordinator. We've done it. We've done it. We've done it. I think that there are a few things that a coach in the NFL at least needs to master. And it's the speed of the NFL game and the complexity of it. It's so much more intense and complex than, than college or, or the CFL or arena football or any of that. Or the it's lingerie just, football league. Or, well, you know, that's pretty XFL? intense, actually. XFL? It's, uh, yeah. <laughs> The XFL, you know, that was that was. Yeah. I applied to be the strength and conditioning coach for the Andre football team. I think we interviewed. He got good. game to coach, actually. <laughs> XFL reverence, no, nothing. Gotcha. He hate me. He hate me. That's what it was. <laughs> he got game. Come on. Come Bad on. reference. Come on, DST. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I think that also the, the another thing that coach needs to be able to do is um, is handle and motivate. Pro, both problem and star pro players. So if you're a college quarterback or college uh, uh, coach and you've got a quarterback that's becoming a problem or or is is getting a big head in some way, it's easy to, to, to motivate that guy. He's a kid and you're guiding him and he can make huge mistakes. Yeah. At the pro level, it's, it's a lot different. So he needs to be able to have proven that he has done is able to do that in some way. Um, finding and exploiting weaknesses, of course, covering your own weaknesses, I think that's a big chore for a coach. And to be able to do that at a high level, I want to see it. I want to see it before you come here. Also, um, building and maintaining like an on-field like play and then uh, like a locker room mentality that that is at least effective. Doesn't have to be brilliant, but at least effective. They've shown you've done that before you come here. So, they are great forms. They are. Well, you know, we hope that the guy coming in and maybe this is why they're they're um, you know not selecting the the GM first, but that he's going to have say. Oh, what is it? Uh, Parcel said, uh, pick the groceries out if they expect you to make a good dinner or something mm -hmm. like that. I mean, th I think that's probably what every coach wants, and you kind of hope that that's going to happen. And probably didn't happen in the case of Shermer. It seemed like he was more of a lackey for Holmgren, who was coaching you know by proxy. Well, you know, so the the ultimate question really being. Does NFL experience matter or does it not? And it probably does and doesn't matter in different situations. You know, in, in the case of Chip Kelly, just let me just go on record right now. I think the guy could be an amazing, take notes, an amazing NFL coach. Oh, and me. here's why. When you can create a whole new system or at least tweak a system in such a way that people can't figure it out and they try to learn from you even if they're at a, a coaching level higher than you, it's pretty damn impressive. So I don't care what system you're thrown into, you're going to continue that sort of innovative thinking, that sort of forward thinking. You may fail at times, but you're probably eventually always going to come out ahead. I like that. I like that from the guy, and that's pretty cool. But it was smart to stay in Oregon. It's just it, it, too early of a jump. He can continue to prove himself over the years and then maybe move into the NFL if he wants to. I like, I like the reference you made there, breaking it down for me, like kitchen and groceries. Yeah. I really felt that one. You that did, yeah. It came from the heart. I got right? it. Like, it came I, from I the like, heart? You know, that was something from the mind. I would say, too. No, no. No straight tuna. All right, so hey, guys. <laughs> All right, so who wants to start off with their bracket picks? Let's make them quick, make I will. them snappy. I will, because you're all zip through through it. Let's go right down the line. Here we go real quick. All right, I'm going to start over here in the NFC, because that's how it gets down. <laughs> Seattle, Atlanta. I think Seattle's going to ride it out. They're a hot team. Their defense is ridiculous. Green Bay, San Francisco. I like San Francisco uh, on both sides of the ball. Green Bay's defense is suspect, so I'm taking the 49ers. Colin Kaepernick. And you're going to see uh, Seattle, San Francisco, two rookie quarterbacks going at it for the uh, NFC Championship. And I think Seattle's rolling it right to the Super Bowl. Mm. Loving their team. I think Russell Wilson's going to take them to the big dance and, and prove to be just this crazy out-of-nowhere quarterback from all these names that were talked about at the beginning of the year. It's going to be real crazy to see him take them all the way. All right, over to the AFC. Denver, Baltimore. Ray Lewis's career ends this weekend as he's not going to get past Peyton Manning. How the hell could Indy not sign him? Fuck Andrew Luck. At least put him a year behind him. They owed it to Peyton Manning to give him another year after all that he's done for that yep. franchise. I love what he's doing in Denver. Uh, Houston, New wow. England. 
Houston, uh, I think they're better than their 12-4 and record. They got weapons, but I don't think Gary Kubiak's going to outcoach uh, Bill Belichick. So I'm giving New England to that one. AFC Championship, Denver, New England. I'm giving it to Peyton Manning. If, if the Broncos could get a game away from the championship with Tim Tebow as their quarterback last year, Peyton Manning is going to cruise these guys to Super Bowl 40, what is it, 7 now? Super Bowl 47? So I've got Denver versus Seattle in the Super Bowl. Peyton Manning <coughs> is getting his second ring with the Denver Broncos. And props to John Elway for luring him there and, and knowing what they needed to do to win. And I would just love to see Peyton back. Four, four uh, Manning Super Bowl wins in the past six years. That's, that's crazy. Uh, that's pretty awesome. You so. know, what you just called for was a Peyton Manning versus one of the greatest defenses I've seen in a long time, Seattle, yeah. in the Super Bowl. That is the yeah. makings of a great game. Yeah, how did Seattle do you against me, Mike, with oh, that defense? Oh, that's pretty good. You know what? I just want to, you know, and just throw this out there. 70-point 70 70 game points. that happened to knock this guy out of his own fantasy record. football league. Yeah. Ugh. You had it rigged anyway. Son of a bitch. Your woman won. Shit. You, you can say it's rigged all you want to, man. Go back, and, and you can add up every score you want to. I've got nothing to hide. Dude, I beat you. Do you really think I'm serious? Shit, you asshole. <laughs> all so, right. Ramon Torres, what are you picking here? I'm going to shake it up a little bit. I ain't going to go with the obvious teams like you guys do. For Denver, obvious, Seattle is obvious? obvious Come on. Obvious losers. We're going to start off just like Dale did on the other side. We got uh, Seattle and Atlanta. I got Seattle in and out right there. Green Bay, San Fran. I think San Fran loses, or Green Bay loses again with San Fran's defense being dominant in that game. And this is where that happens, the upset. I got San Fran beating Seattle to go on to the Super Bowl. Then in that Baltimore game versus Denver, Ray Lewis. Sacks the fuck out of Manning for the game. Moves on to the conference championship versus Houston. Where Denver's, uh, well, Baltimore's defense takes on Houston's <laughs> offense and just tears them up. <laughs> and this is the thing right here. Tell me. It's going to be an all-defensive Super Bowl. San Fran and Baltimore. Ooh, a Harbaugh versus Harbaugh. Yep. That sells some tickets. And Baltimore winning it all. Boom. Baltimore. I have no idea how the fuck you got there, but I'm Joe sure. Joe Flacco. I'm sure somewhere in there you, you Joe put it Flacco all winning. <laughs> all right. All right, well, I will continue this, and let's just start with Green Bay, Minnesota. Of course, we know, uh, wait, what the hell happened? Whoa. Oh, yes, right, Seattle. <laughs> Seattle and uh, Green Bay yep. both we, moved we, on. We missed that and week, Mike. <laughs> we missed it. Did we miss it? Yeah, we were on vacay. Really? Yep. Oh, Okay. Um, Green Bay and Seattle, it, they're moving on, of course, to face San Francisco and the Falcons. Seattle already said it's one of the best defenses I've seen in a long you time. You did say that. They are moving forward. We're going to take them all the way to the Super Bowl, and uh, we'll work with Green Bay, San Francisco. San Francisco wins but loses to Seattle. Now, if we look, move to the other side, of course, we have uh, Peyton Manning versus the Ravens, and then Houston versus New England. Uh, I gotta think that um, Belichick, as much as I hate him, moving on. New England moves on. Denver. Peyton Manning is just the guy, and this is his his environment with the best team I think he's ever had, and that means Denver versus New England. That is where Peyton Manning shines sometimes, and Peyton Manning doing it. Denver, Seattle. Peyton Manning with another Super Bowl. Hey, Victory. I like it. Great minds think alike. Lose it. Yeah. All right, let me you did check out this uh, winning record here, this winning bracket. Couldn't believe I was right to myself, actually. Oh, in the uh, <laughs> NFC, <laughs> <laughs> Seahawks and Falcons, I got the Seahawks moving on. Oh, nobody giving the Falcons love, uh, man. Poor number one seed. San Francisco and the Packers. Yep. I got the Packers moving on. I got San Francisco losing that one. We got the Packers in Seattle in the NFC. I think that's where Seattle's uh, run comes down to an end there. So I got the Packers going on to the Super Bowl. In the AFC, the Patriots and the Texans. I think the Patriots are just a little too old and the, the uh, Texans are a little younger. I think the Texans are uh, going to move on and beat the Patriots and give Tom, uh, Tom Brady and Bill Belichick a little uh, swift kick in the ass. You're stupid. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> the Ravens and the Broncos. This is where... Uh, Ray Lewis's end comes to uh, to a close. His era, 
Broncos win. Broncos and Texans. Uh, I think the Broncos will be too uh, too tough for the Texans to handle. So the Broncos Denver, are on the Super Bowl. Green Bay. Denver Green Bay. What about a Peyton Manning, uh, wow. Aaron Rodgers Super Bowl? Wow. Wow. Actually, I'd like to see that. Wow. Peyton Manning gets his second Super Bowl. Broncos win. I like his better. That would be I'm pretty. Still fun. saying Denver Seattle though. They're they're rough stuff. I just think that'd be a. That's all good. Actually, I mean, I, you know, the only thing I, I want to see, uh, of course, is no New England in the Super Bowl. That's just, I hate every single Super Bowl they're in. I would actually not mind them getting there as long as Shut they Shut up, lose. dude. The Chiefs. As long as they Hard lose. Ball. Yeah. Although, I, I will say. Harbaugh, Harbaugh. The Super Bowl. There you go. Market that the shit. Super yeah. Harbaugh. Yeah. You got nuts in your mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, this is the winner right here. Is it baseball season yet? No. I, but uh, before we move on, before we do, I think we have Echo. Uh, what? No, we. Who's that audio, Dan? Brett? Not audio. No, I think there is.